What's up people, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So today, I'm gonna tell you all my secrets on how I find bangers. So if you were to name one thing that DJs protect more than anything in this entire world, what would it be? I'll give you a hint, it's not their wives. <laughs> It's not their kids. You know what that one thing is? It's their bangers. DJs like to protect their bangers so much that we even have features built into our software like AM mode that hides the tracks you're playing. Don't worry people, I'm not one of those DJs. This video is gonna be so ridiculously valuable to you that I'm gonna give you a guarantee right now before you even watch it, okay? I guarantee that you will learn at least one thing from this video, okay? I'm giving you a one nugget guarantee, people. And if you do learn something today, I'm gonna need you to really help me out and hit the like button down there for the almighty algorithms. And if you're not subscribed yet, I'm gonna need you to punch that subscribe button in the face. So let's get this thing started. First of all, shout out to DJ Ronnie M on the video idea. I thought it was a great idea and something that like, I didn't think of on my own to cover, but this is such an important topic. I mean, I live my life by that one Jazzy Jeff quote. The best DJs aren't the people that play the most popular records, it's the person who played the most unexpected record at the right time. This is one of the greatest DJ quotes of all time in my opinion because it's so, so true. You see, as DJs, the easy way to do it, the easy way to get people to dance, quote unquote, would be to stick to the top 200, right? The top 200 list, the DJ intelligence list that we all use at weddings, right? Or whatever, you know, your Uptown Funks, your Michael Jacksons, you know, your Yeah by Usher, the basic stuff, right? That would be, quote unquote, the easy route as far as DJing. You play the hits and people dance. But to set yourself apart, to truly just level up and be a great DJ takes supreme music knowledge and the wherewithal to literally play some shit that nobody else would play. Or at least be one of the first to do it. And if you guys see my crate list, uh, you know I spend a lot of time digging and constantly updating, constantly looking for new stuff to play and whatnot. For me as a DJ, the most delicious thing in the world is when I play a song I've never played before and it goes off on the dance floor. You know what I mean? And you get that new ooh. Everybody's like, oh, you drop it. And it's like, yes, this worked. Like, there's nothing more delicious to me, you know? If I play Yeah by Usher and everyone cheers and dances it's cool but I've already done that a million times you know when it's the first time when it's the first whoo delicious so anyway you get it bangers are important let's talk about how to find them if you want to find the greatest bangers of all time you have to live your life by one simple rule ALFB always listen for bangers I am always listening for bangers while I'm watching TV while I'm shopping at Walmart while I'm listening to the radio in my car. Even while I'm watching Twitch. I am always, always, always listening for bangers. I can't tell you how many times I've found some really, really dope tracks or discovered new artists just from a TV commercial or what they were playing in the background on Wawa. Or, you know what I mean? Like there's always music around us everywhere. So always listen, always keep that ear open. Always, always, always. And speaking about that ear, when you're listening for bangers, right? It's very important that you listen for bangers from the perspective of what you like more than what you think a crowd would like. Does that make sense? You see, a lot of DJs will listen to the dopest music in their private time. You know, they have the greatest, like deepest library and super great musical taste, but they don't play it out. They don't play it when they DJ. When they DJ, they go and just DJ the basic stuff because they're scared to play the stuff they really like. And you'd be surprised how many times the shit you like would work great on a dance floor. Always remember, no matter what kind of artist, even if it's indie, even if it's not that well known, they still get a lot of plays. They're still, thousands if not millions of people that know about the artist, that recognize the song, that might even listen to it and like it, and think the same thing you do, that oh, this is a great song, but like I wouldn't play it at my wedding because no one's gonna know it. That's not true. That's a very, very common misconception. So always remember when you're listening for bangers, listen with your heart more than you listen with your head that's trying to talk you out of you know, playing that because no one's gonna dance to it. All right, so your ears are warmed up, you're always listening for bangers, you're ready to go. Let's talk about where to dig. So the first place I always start is Apple Music and Spotify. It's an obvious answer, but they have a lot of really useful playlists. If you're diving in and trying to learn about a new genre of music, that's a great place to start. So when there's a genre or a vibe of music I don't know a whole lot about, I find an artist within that genre that I really, really like. I'm like, okay, I like this artist. And usually it's the artist that introduced me to the genre, you know, in the first place. Like I'll hear an artist, I'll be like, wow, I want more of that. 
you know, what are some artists like that? So I'll go to that artist page on Spotify and Apple Music, and then I look for the artist suggestions. What do they suggest to look at? And then you can kind of dive into a rabbit hole that way and kind of really discover a lot of stuff. You see, Apple Music and Spotify is just the tip of the iceberg. That is just where I start. That is where I will look up the main parts of what I wanna like research to take to the next level. Are you ready for this next level? This next level is called Gnod. Now, Gnod is this online-based, completely free algorithm. I have the link for it in the description if you guys wanna check it out. I'm not affiliated or whatever, I don't know. It's something I just discovered online, right? So it's an online algorithm and essentially, you type in an artist and actually, come to the computer, I'll show you. So this is Gnod or Gnod or Global Network of Discovery. Let's use the latest technological advances to make us all discover more and better things. Love it, like the logo. So this is the website, right? So you go down here and this is the music portion, right? We're gonna be checking out that we can use as DJs. But if you come down to, they have one for products. They got one for art. If you wanna discover like a new artist, if you're into like paintings and stuff, literature for books, obviously, movies. It's super, super cool. And this is like their little bout. So this algorithm, you know, a allows you to find cool shit on, you know, whatever you like to watch or check out in your free time too, you know what I mean? So there's definitely a lot of uses for this, but let's go to music, right? Since we're DJ. So the first thing it offers, project one is Discover. Essentially with Discover is you go through and you enter three artists that you like, and then it gives you one artist that you're probably gonna love. And you know, just like, so it basically gives you a suggestion of a new artist to check out. So I'm gonna look at Kanye West, right? These are like my free, three favorite rappers right now. So Kanye West, Little Wayne and the baby is the shit. So, young boy never broke again. So I've never <laughs> listened to this guy in my life. What a name! Holy shit, that's a mouthful. Um, I'm gonna go check him out. See what I think. Hold on. <whistles> All right, I'm back. He's got some dope shit. So it worked. This is this is. I like this guy. I'm gonna start playing him. So bam. All right. So that's cool. So this is a cool way. You enter three artists. It works for any genre ever. You enter your three artists, and then you can discover a new one. Now, my favorite tool that this has, though, is the music map. So let me show you how this works. For this, you enter one artist, right? So you enter one artist, and it's going to bring up a whole damn map. So let's do Kanye West for a second, right? Because I love Kanye. So we'll do Kanye. So what it does is it takes Kanye West, and then it populates this map with all these other artists. And you'll see that, like, the artists will fall based on uh, how alike and how likely you are to like them, right? So like Con uh, Kendrick Lamar right here, right under Kanye West, he's similar to Kanye West. I love Kendrick Lamar as well. So, you know, that's uh, that's super accurate. ASAP Rocky, right? The Weeknd, super accurate. Frank Ocean, I never really got into. So that's interesting. He's kind of like right above. But if you look at around, right, there's different kind of groupings. And the artist that is closest to Kanye West, you're mo most likely to like, and then you can kind of branch out from there. So like, for example, J. Cole and Childish Cambino, right? These are the closest to Kanye West in this group. If you like J. Cole and Childish Cambino already, then maybe you should check out Kids See Ghost, which is Kanye, Denzel Curry, Lupe Fiasco. Maybe you should check them out. And if you like them, then maybe you should check out, you know, J.I.D. or Young Thug or Run the Jewels, you know? And you could see, like, Young Thug's moving right now. That's because this algorithm is actively working. Like, it's actively analyzing everything, whatever it does, and it's, it's updating in real time. So, like, some artists might, like, move closer, move further away, that sort of thing, based on search, based on however their complicated algorithm works. But it's cool. So you just basically go to different groups. You know, do you like Travis Scott, Brock Hampton? All right, then you're probably going to like Big Sean. You know what I mean? And then you go that way. If you don't like Joey Badass, you know, or Schoolboy Q, then you're probably not going to like these guys. So you probably don't check them out, you know, and that's kind of how you go about it. Let's try another artist for fun real quick. Let's put in Taylor Swift. Let's see what kind of white girl music they pop up with here. Taylor Swift. And bam, look at this. So this is everything in my white girl folder, as you could probably guess. So you got Taylor Swift, and then the closest artists, Carrie Underwood, Colby Calais, or Col I don't know how to say her name, and then Ariana Grande. Super, that's super on the money. Then you go down Selena Gomez. You like Selena Gomez? Maybe you like Justin Bieber, Avril Lavigne, you know, Little Mix, all that stuff, right? And then, you know, so it, it works the same way. You see the groupings, right? Kobe Calais, Carrie Underwood, you like them, then maybe get into like Blake Shelton, Anne Marie. If you didn't like Carrie Underwood, you probably didn't like country, so you're not going to touch any of these country stuff, you know? And it, it, so it really does make sense. It is super, super accurate. I seriously can't tell you guys how many artists I've discovered by using this music map. Crazy, right? 
Now this is a great tool for discovering new music for yourself or just to play on your Twitch pages or whatever, but it's also a really cool tool to use when you're planning for weddings. See, if a couple mentions to you that, hey, we're really big Zac Brown band fans, or I don't know, like if they like a specific artist, you know, like a lot, like, like, the, you know, you'll get couples that like, this is, they're all about this artist. They've seen them 10 times in concert, all that stuff. Well, you look your couple's artist up on Gnon and it'll give you a ton of suggestions of other artists that they probably like and give you a lot of ideas of things to play at their wedding that they didn't know they wanted, you know, because I love playing songs at weddings where it's like, oh my God, that was awesome. I didn't, that wasn't even on my playlist. Thank you. Like that was, I love this song. You know what I mean? Where you're like in your couple's head, that next level intuition, like, oh my God, I didn't even know I wanted to hear the song, but I wanted to hear it type shit. That's the major key, people. That's the major key. That will set you apart from every other wedding DJ on this planet because 99% of you will not do the work and the research and the planning and put in the time to actually do this. So the 1% of you that does, woo, you're gonna kill it. You are gonna literally set your market on fire. But wait, there's more. <laughs> You guys ever hear a Hype Machine? Hype Machine is an online website that basically does a special little analytic or whatever and it scans all blogs, SoundCloud, Spotify, like everywhere a musical note lives, right? It just scans everything and it compiles lists based on real human interaction with these songs. And you can organize it a bunch of different ways. Come to my computer and I'll show you. So this is Hype Machine. It's a super cool website. It's got a crazy algorithm that basically scans the entire internet for bangers. And it tells you what the bangers are. And uh, it's pretty accurate. So if you go to popular here, this is what I usually use, um, popular now. It'll basically, you know, have a little list of all the popular songs, uh, remixes, everything else that are gaining a lot of traction on the internet. It scans every site. And if you want to check out a particular song like this, Under Boss Remix, you just click on the SoundCloud. It'll bring you right to the SoundCloud to play it. Holy shit. Anyway. But yeah, so it's super, super useful for that. You can find a lot of bangers that way. Uh, the algorithm is pretty damn correct. You'd be surprised at how many songs you're going to like off this list. And then you can organize it too by like just remixes if you're just looking for new remixes and stuff or no remixes where you're just looking for new original songs. And see what I do is I'll look at a list like this, right? This is no remixes, zero original music that's coming out that's kind of catching wind. I'll look at a band like Salt, right? They have two songs in the top five. I'll put Salt into the Ganad system, you know, the Gnod or whatever, and and, you know, and, and dive into that rabbit hole and see what else I can kind of discover if I end up liking Salt and what they're doing, you know. And you end up discovering some, some, some really, really cool stuff, you know, before anybody else will for sure, you know. And what's cool, Hype Machine has a cool little story, you know. It's, it's made by these three probably very smart people, and I guess the dog helps out too. You know, and it's a privately owned little thing that they constantly update and they run off of donations, you know. So you donate a little bit of money. They give you a little extra features, like you get to check out their time machine, which is essentially like all their charts, like all the history of their charts dating back to when they started, you know, which is super useful. So if you're really trying to dig. And it's just a super cool thing, you know. Not a lot of people know about this until now. <laughs> crazy shit, right? So these are my secrets, people. This is what I do to try and find new music. I try and do this at least once a week. I try and set a music day once a week, maybe once every other week, to just kind of dig, see what's popping, see what came out, you know, see what people are liking so I have new and fresh stuff to play. I can't stress enough that DJing only starts feeling like a job when you do the same shit over and over again because to me, that's the definition of a regular job, a nine to five. You go to work at nine, you get off at five, you do the same stuff every day. I mean, that's literally like, that's the, the, the epitome of a regular job. And I'm not hating on that. I'm just saying when that life applies to the DJ world, that's how something even as awesome as DJing can turn into just feeling like a job and just, oh, whatever, gotta go work today. And you never, never, never want to approach this art like that because we're just too lucky to be where we're at. We're too lucky to already have put in the groundwork or starting or just having the opportunity or just wherever you're at in your career, you are incredibly, incredibly lucky to be a DJ for a living in some capacity. It's the greatest job on earth, people. I'm telling you. So just keep it fresh and you will be the happiest DJ ever. And you're also going to shit on everybody in your market at the same time. Win-win! But thank you people for watching this video. I appreciate every single one of you. If you want some more wedding DJ tips and stuff, we got a whole playlist up there. I got a bunch of tips up there that you can learn from and whatnot. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys at the next one. Peace out.